So we've just finished from the uh, morning's red deer hunt and that went on to about lunchtime. We're going to Uncle Jimmy's property now and hopefully Sam gets another chance to, to crack a, a fallow again. They're just in velvet so it's early stages but um, the weather's nice. It's, it was raining for the last few weeks. It stopped raining now and we've had a few really windy days and my aim this whole trip is to find a fallow fawn and they're due to give birth this week. <laughs> I don't know what day but it's sometime this week so if we find a young fawn that would, be, that would make my whole year to be honest. Like, um, it's something I'm really dying to see again and, and I'm looking for a doe preferably and yes we'll see what happens if we do see one fawning and we have the chance to take one yeah, we're gonna definitely take advantage of it this time so we've just arrived and we're heading out to the bottom paddock, which is a pretty bold move, being that we've been driving for the last few hours. But Sam's keen and we're ready to go. Let's see what the afternoon brings. A few does just ran down the paddock and they caught us by surprise. So I've come down to check if there's any fawns. It's probably a few days early but it's nice and green so the fawns will be tucked into this green stuff. But as I was looking down, and if you can see, I'll show you that. <laughs> Casty finding time. Mad. Oh yeah, that's the first casting of a trip. Sam's gonna be spewing because I got it first. Yeah, nothing spectacular, but man, it's awesome. <laughs> Just finding these things. You've got to try bow hunting. The more and more I'm doing this, the more I'm learning patience, the more I'm learning everything. I'm, if I felt it felt good, I was standing at 33 meters, so I moved up a pace or two. I used my 30 pin, and from what I can see, it hit him. Okay, it hit him pretty well under the shoulder. So I'm in the sun, the sun's facing my eyes, but what a rush, what a feeling. I hope we got him, but it looked like I got him, so um, I'm, I'm confident with this one. I've just found the arrow and it's broken now. I'm not the experienced one. Hey, what does it mean? Well, that means it's either gone halfway through and cracked in him, which has done considerable, considerable damage, really. He should, he should be down from the way he ran. We found blood, now we get the arrow, so now it's game on, it's game on. We just have to track him slowly. And that means the arrow's inside of him. 100%. And he 
and and it's got blood all the way through so that's a given now this is taking way longer than we expected the blood's starting to thin out and he's headed towards the top of the hill hopefully we find him in this beauty bush You won't believe what just happened. Sam came running back to me and goes to me, come, come, I thought he found the deer that he was looking for. He goes to me, poacher. I was like, shit. So I sort of ran in front of Sam and I was tracing him. He was probably about 100 meters always away from me. And I made sure I could get the camera on him. I zoomed it in as far as I could. Hey, buddy. T Turn around, mate. What are you doing? Put your rifle down now. Put your rifle down. But his face is very visible. So this guy's gonna get busted, it's only a matter of time. Um, yeah. That's unbelievable, some people. He turned around, he goes, oh, is this the state forest? And then he bolted for his life. <laughs> I ran after him, but the smart ass, like I said, he had a head start and he ran down the gullies. I lost him. I just couldn't make eye contact with him. I would have kept going, but I couldn't see him. And he's got a rifle, so I've got nothing on me. I'm just my camera. I told him, stop, and let's talk, but people are stupid. If he just sat down and spoke to me and apologized and everything, it probably would have been all right, but this is gonna go way further than this now. <sighs> yeah. Now to find Uncle Jimmy and let him know. Poor bloke, buys land, you know, for his kids, for his family, or even close friends to come and hunt on and you know have a good time and then you get scum like that. That use excuses like, oh is, is that a state forest? Like he was clearly he came from the top and he's walked all the way down the paddock. Lucky Sam seen him. Well lucky Sam was looking for his buck and came across him. But yeah. This guy's going for obviously a mouse or something. Now this is day number two and Sam is letting the chooks out. We usually let them out during the day. They get to eat grass and fresh grubs and worms and insects and yeah, and we go for our hunt and come back in the afternoon and close the door on them. I'm now convinced that he's uh, slipped away from me. So, as I said previously, we're going to um, fly the drone around now in three different paddocks that he could have possibly ran towards. If we can see him um, laying somewhere miraculously in the grass, which I doubt it now, so I've lost all hope. Um, we'll see what happens, but this is a first for us. So, we're gonna try the drone and um, last chance but yeah yesterday's turn of events kind of ruined everything so i mean we possibly could have been hot on his heels and found this spiker and 
would have been good because I, I was pretty solid. It was a good shot, but so let's just see what we're doing now. This is this is pretty much the last ditch effort, but no hopes of it. So we're here for our afternoon sit after just flying that drone and no success in finding Sam's spiker from yesterday, which is unfortunate. But yeah, we're gonna try our luck for this afternoon. We got a beautiful 360 view. It's a bloody long wait, but if you enjoy the wildlife and just the scenery, the first kangaroos have started to come out, so it's only a matter of time. Sam's sitting there patiently, he's drinking his monster drinks and trying to make me jealous, but we're about to fall asleep at the same time, but we're relaxed, and that's the main thing. It was hard because I was in the sun and we had like 300 kangaroos but well deserved and now I can finally get some more meat for the house this is all I really eat to be honest so that's good happy days happy days we had a really bad day yesterday lots of drama I went for one and he got away pretty much let's just put it that way anyways we were uphill and um, sitting there for an afternoon. We had about four hours to kill and time was going. It was killing us. But um, gradually they came out. Now, it's in the same area where we had all the dramas yesterday, so we didn't expect any deer to come out. Anyways, long story short, we had a whole bunch of females come out and they're about to give birth. So they're really fat. There were a few really thin ones, but I said to my brother there, the nucleus of this place, they are the future of this place. So. I wasn't interested in females. I said, if I see any spikers, we'll go for them. This bloke came out with another one with the other two females, but they look like females anyways. Glassed them, got real close and seen that they had knobs coming out. Anyways, um, that's when I said to him, all right, I'm gonna go for them. Uh, now, now Zahe tried following me and he had two wallabies staring straight at him. And what happened with me was, was I pretty much got got close and then I got nearly bumped by a, by a grey kangaroo but he stood there I stood my time for five minutes waited for him waited for him pushed through had the Sun right in my eyes seen these guys still there and um, went man this is it I'm lucky um, I ranged him at 20 meters now the Sun was in my eye direct late afternoon here pretty much in summer so it was a hard hard shot 20 meters I hit him straight through the stomach um, he didn't go far, he didn't go far, but we know that when you hit him through the stomach, you have to wait for him. Now, I waited until he got into this little creek, stalked in real slow, real, real slow, just so I don't spook him. 
and put another one through him, through the heart. That did the job, voila. Well, after the devastating floods, we've come and repaired the boundary line, which goes through the creek. I'll show you how high the water went. See the top of that tree? All the way to the back bank there. So we've remeshed this section. There were massive trees in here. Jimmy and Sam are cleaning up this last section so we can finish meshing it off. But that's how high the waters were up to that point up there, which is amazing. But the creek is so clear and stunningly beautiful at the moment. So we're going to continue fixing and clearing up and patching up all these boundary fences and putting up new signs. So what are the chances of me coming across a fawn in the thickest of thick? I was just, we're going down to film a nice waterfall because with, with all this rain we've had and man, I saw spots in, in a little nest and I couldn't believe my eyes. It's only the 26th or 27th of November and yeah, they, they're sort of due in the next few days and this one looks like it's about two days old. So, oh man, what a find. <laughs> it's amazing, such a beautiful little animal. The new baby. How cute. How cute, How cute. How cute. nice. Like a dark browny common red colour. Yeah, yep. it's a female. That's what's mad. <laughs> what are we going to call this one? Uh, we'll find out soon. Same time next week, we focus our attention on a cheeky Aussie icon, the Galah. Turn notifications on as you won't want to miss it.